Hello everybody, it's me, stand-up comedian Sean Deals with another episode of Fantasy Universe Wrestling Podcast. Oh yeah, I've been gone a few weeks, you know, dealing with Christmas, got all that stress going on, but I'm back. Uh, I got a big mega episode, the last episode of the year, big uh, giant episode for you guys, and at the very end of the episode, we're doing our first annual Shawnee Awards. Like, what the fuck's a Shawnee Award? Shawnee Awards are basically, you know, the Slammies. Uh, except I give out the awards, and uh, we've got all kinds of cool uh, categories. Best Wrestler, Best Match of the Year, Best uh, Mike Talker, Best Tag Team. All that's coming up at the very end of the show. Um, of course, I've only watched a handful of AEW, so everything will probably be, you know, a WWE superstar. And, you know, like I said, we got a shit ton to review, like two weeks worth of wrestling, which is like 50 fucking hours. So let's go ahead and dive in. Alright, this was Raw, I believe, two, three weeks ago. It starts off with Drew McIntyre versus Jey Uso. Uh, these guys had a pretty uh, good match. Uh, Drew was very vicious here, and uh, he is showing he is showing that as a good threat for uh, Seth Rollins coming up. And Drew got the victory over Jey Uso. Rhea and Damian are arguing backstage again. Uh, I really hope. I, I see my theory is they're going to kick Damian Priest out, and they're going to put Drew McIntyre in his spot, and him and Rhea. We'll run Judgment Day with Dominic Mysterio getting jealous and six months later maybe him turning on Rhea or Rhea turning on him. Next up we had Bronson Reed versus Ivar. This was cut from Hulu. Uh, it's really pissing me the fuck off because I love my big boys and my big boys ain't on Hulu. And uh, apparently Bronson Reed won that match. I really wish I got to watch that. Judgment Day comes out, and uh, my boy R-Truth comes out with them uh, to piss them off. And uh, it was hilarious, but Damian Priest turns on them, and uh, they jump R-Truth. But the Creed Brothers save the day. Next up, we have Caden Carter and Katana Chance versus uh, Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell. This is another... Tag match I didn't really care about. Uh, I just, I just, yeah, just no one a fan of this. Uh, Kane Carter and uh, K- uh, Katana Chance won. Uh, next up is DIY and The Miz versus Imperium. Uh, Hulu also cut this one out with DIY and Miz winning, uh, which is great. I love, I love all six guys in this match. Uh, really wish I would have got to see that. Next up, CM Punk signs to Raw. He is officially a Raw superstar. And Seth Rollins comes out. And boy, I love this. I mean, Seth, I mean, he he could have said it better, really. He he really let Punk have it. And I thought Punk was going to fire back. But Punk's like, man, he get one. One shot in. It is really badass. It, it reminds me of the Marvel DC crossover. I don't know if it's the first one. Might have been the second, third, or fourth of the crossovers. But anyway, it's a crossover and Batman and Punisher kind of teamed up. And Batman stopped Punisher from killing people. Punisher punched Batman in the face. Batman's like, you got, you get one. Punisher left. He knew not to fuck with Batman. And that's, that's what kind of reminded me of. Seth Rollins calling Punk out. Punk's like, you get one. And it's really kind of cool. Uh... <coughs> Punk also declared he will be in the Royal Rumble. So, so far we know Cody and Punk will be in the Rumble. Speaking of Cody, in the main event, it was Cody Rose versus Shinsuke Nakamura. I think on the last episode, I think, uh, I think this one was going to end in a funny outcome. And I was right. Uh, it ended with DQ after Shinsuke used his, uh, is it Poison Mist? I don't know. They, his mist on Cody. Next up, we have AEW Power 137. Uh, first up, we have the Heavenly Butterflies versus Daisy Kill and Talos. 
uh, Daisy killing Talos. These guys look like it's a real deal here. These guys look great. They had a pretty entertaining match. Uh, I, I really like Daisy killing Talos. I hope to see more of them. And they actually got the win, which is really cool. Then we have Joe Ocasio versus Kobe Corino, I believe, for the NWA World Junior Heavyweight Championship. Um, I don't know either of these guys. I wasn't very interested in this match because, of course, I don't know anybody. But the match was good for what it was with, uh, I believe, Kobe Carino, who, uh, who came in as the champion. He also left as the champion winning the match. Uh, next up we have, oh boy, these women have hard to say names. I believe Erica Demia versus Taylor Rising versus Ali Rex. Uh, this was actually my really fun match. This triple threat women's match. I love how her name is Taylor Rising. I think it is a nod to Terror Rising, uh, which was Triple H's name in WCW. Uh, I think that's really cool. We go Terror Rising now, Taylor Rising, and my girl Taylor Rising win. She won the match. You know, just because of her name alone, I actually rooted for her, and I was really happy she won. And in the main event. We had the Brothers of Unstruction with Violent J from In Clown, Insane Clown Posse uh, versus the Immortals. Um, wasn't a great match, but uh, in fact, they actually kind of fucked up a couple spots. But that's fine, you know, shit happens, it's live. Well, this ain't live, but, you know, yeah, shit happens, it's wrestling. I doubt I could do much better, but I this match was awesome. Uh, I love... The Brothers of Unstruction. I was a huge Doink the Clown fan. So these guys, I think, were a lot of fun. I, uh, I just love the look of them. Uh, Violent J being with them is pretty cool, too. Uh, not a huge Insane Clown Posse fan. I I dig some of their stuff, but I definitely wouldn't consider myself like a, a juggalo. But, you know, you know I, I don't diss them like a lot of people do either. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> the big motherfuckers, the Immortals, won the match. I was kind of hoping uh, Brothers of Unstruction would win. Uh, but the Immortals won, and oh, boy, these guys are fucking jacked. One of their names is, like, I think one of the guys' names is Kratos. Like, okay, that's cool. Next up, we have NXT. We start with Cora J. Does an awful-ass promo. Blair... Davenport comes out, and you know, then Lyra, Valkyria, and Nikita Loins saw setting up for the main event later tonight. Uh, Nikita, holy shit, <laughs> you're off to it, <laughs> I hope Tasia, my girlfriend, didn't listen to that. But god damn. Next up, Carmelo and Trick Williams enters the venue, and Carmelo gets jumped, but we don't see who it is. I believe this shit is staged. I believe Carmelo is faking it. Because the doctor said he was just fine. And uh, he was able to fight on SmackDown. So next up we had uh, Josh Briggs and Brooks Jensen. And Phelan Henley. They fought against Metaphor. And uh, Josh Briggs, Brooks Jensen, and Phelan Henley won that match. Uh, Then they show all the guys and the NXT Breakout Men's Tournament. Uh, and it's funny the two guys I thought were gonna like go the furthest got eliminated the fucking fucking first round, which is hilarious. Uh, Lexus King runs out during this part and jumps one of the guys to the chair, and later on, uh, some reason Ava Rain, or I think that's her name, the Rock's daughter, announces Lexus King will take the spot. Uh, the guy he beat up in the tournament. What the fuck? I think I said this last week, but what is? What what is she doing? Is she still wrestling? Is she is she like slowly transitioning to another area in WWE? Is she going to be a backstage interviewer? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know what she what's going on there. Hopefully you'll find out soon. Uh, I was really looking forward to seeing her. I feel horrible, but her fucking teeth. I don't know if that's holding her back. But gosh damn, uh, I, I do like her though. I hope this. I hope she. Uh, Sticks with it and could find a good spot for her soon. Uh, next up, we had Oba Femi versus Miles Bourne in the Mills Breakout Tournament. 
Miles Bourne was actually one of the guys I thought was going to win the whole thing. And he got beat in the first round here by Ubu Fimi. Uh, next up, we had Dragon Lee versus Tyler Bate for the NXT North American Championship with Dragon Lee going over. Uh, this was definitely a good match. Uh, I kind of wanted Tyler Bate to win, but, you know, I'm not mad Dragon Lee did. Uh, next up, we had Eddie Thorpe versus Dijak. Uh, the match ended in a DQ um, with Eddie Thorpe winning by disqualification. Uh, this this match will could happen later on in the next week or two. Next up, we have uh, Keanu Carver versus Riley Os- Osborne. Uh, now, unfortunately, Riley Osborne is a new member of Chase U. Oh, God damn it. They got a fuck another one. I can't stand these guys. This guy, uh, and apparently him and Thea Hill, the person I would consider my least favorite W superstar at the moment, uh, she has a crush on this guy, and so there's going to be some shit going on with that. This is, and Riley Osborne won. Uh, but now, you know, I, I was, my two guys are out who I thought was going to win this whole thing. But Lexus King being put in the tournament, you know, that, that's just good. Good, good. I'm glad. And Lex, hopefully, Lexus King will win this whole thing. Speaking of Lexus King, I read an article that. The Lexus King fans are calling themselves registered Lex offenders, which I thought was the funniest thing on fucking planet Earth. That is awesome. I don't know if Lexus King found that funny as I did, but uh, that is funny as shit. So in the main event, Lyra Vakria versus and Nikita Loins versus Blair Davenport and Cora Jade. Uh, the heels won this match, and it looks like those those girls will probably either fight at New Year's Evil or or the pay-per-view after that. So I got to watch AEW Dynamite again. Hell yeah. So it starts out with Samoa Joe calling out Hangman Page. Because uh, last week MJF got attacked by the devil again. Uh, and I uh, actually, um, actually knew that because I actually watched the YouTube on that. Because I do like MJF so I try to keep up with his stuff. One th- one complaint I have with AEW though is like when matches start, uh, like in the middle of the first match, they'll go over every match that's going to happen that episode. I don't like that. I like how W does it, and they you know they tell you in the very beginning of the episode, "Hey, here's what's happening tonight. Stay tuned." But they do it in the damn first match. I was like, "Damn, you're ruining the match." Like, you know, like if you're going to like imagine if this match was a classic. And then they put this out on, uh, well, I guess DVDs aren't a thing anymore. But they brought this back, or may- maybe like a best of on the streaming service. You're going to have that stupid-ass promos for the rest of the card. You're tainting the match and don't like that. I don't know. It just it, it got on my nerves. And they keep saying winner is coming. I don't know what that means. Is that like an upcoming pay-per-view? Are they fans of Game of Thrones? You know, are, are they... Part timing as a weatherman for extra money. I don't know. Uh, I can't blame them too much. I'm sure they have explained it. I just haven't had the time to watch it. All right. In our first match, we had Adam Page versus Roderick Strong. Um, Adam Page also ca- uh, comes out uh, and defends himself of Small Joe, and that's how the match got started. Adam Page defeating Roderick Strong. I remember seeing Roderick Strong on NXT. I didn't really care for him on NXT. Uh, not really a big fan of him here either. Uh, I haven't seen enough of Adam Page. I know he was AEW champion. So hopefully I get to watch more of this. And I can tell you definitely, uh, definitively if I like Adam Page or not. Right now I don't really have an opinion on the guy. Uh, next up we had Andrade El Idilo versus Brody King. And I've been hearing so much of Brody King. I was like, oh man, I can't wait to see Brody King. Brody King lost here to Andre El Idolo. I was like, oh well, shit. I mean, he looked badass. I did like what I saw as a guy. Uh, I got. I just need to hopefully keep watching AEW Dynamite to learn more. Uh, next up, we had Orange Cassidy, Danhausen. Uh, they met Kevin Von Erich and his sons. Uh, I was really excited to see my buddy Danhausen. He's like one of my favorite wrestlers that's not in WWE right now. 
And uh, it's kind of cool they had the whole thing with the Von Erichs and that they're going to have a uh, match on Rampage. Uh, that is Orange Cassidy and the Von Erichs kids will be having a match with Dan Housen in the corner. Uh, next up, Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho called the Golden Jets come out and call out Ricky Starks and Big Bill. Uh, Kenny's promo delivery was so fucking lame here. Uh, I haven't seen many of Kenny's promos, but I wasn't a fan of it. This whole segment was kind of bleh. Was not a fan of this. Even they even like fucking called it out themselves. Like this didn't really go well. And uh, I don't know. It just I feel like the ad libbing is fun, but when you have too much freedom, it kind of fucks you up. Timeless Tony Storm comes out to join commentary. And we get to watch Ruby Soho versus Rio. And uh, I've seen Ruby Soho uh, mostly from when she was Ruby Wright in WWE. I actually have her action figure in my room. Speaking of action figure, I know this is off topic, but uh, I had a very stressful work, uh, work week. Very stressful work week, especially like today. I just got off work and I'm recording in my Monster Dome studio. And, uh, but as a little payment, as like a... Good boy, Sean. I actually bought myself a Solo Sokoa action figure at work. Uh, we actually got our first time I've uh, been uh, work. We actually got some WWE action figures in. I bought the Rick Steiner. And then uh, Christmas came. And I was like, well, fuck. I don't want to buy any more until Christmas is over. So I waited. And finally, Christmas is over, and I was like, you know what? I've been a good boy, and I bought myself a solo Sokoa. Hell yeah. Anyway, back to the show. So, yeah, Ruby Soho versus Rio. It was fine. Very quick match. Rio won the match. Uh, I wouldn't mind if Ruby Soho came back to WWE. Uh, go back to Ruby Riot. I liked her over there, even though she didn't win. Uh... You know, I haven't really seen her win a whole lot in AEW either, so who knows? Maybe she likes it over there. I don't know. Next up, we had a Wardlow hype video. He wants MJF. Uh, yeah, I mean, when I watched AEW like a year or so ago, I remember Wardlow and MJF were having a feud. But that was back when MJF was a heel and Wardlow was a face. And, uh, yeah. So I guess they're doing that again. Next up, we had Roosh versus Jay Lethal. Uh, I was really hoping Jay Lethal would win. But, of course, Roosh. Roosh won that match. Then we have Jay White versus Jay Briscoe. And I was really hoping Jay Briscoe won. But Jay White won. Uh, I was like, God damn. I, no, one ever, no one ever who I wants to win ever wins. This old card. And I was just like... I want that guy to win, and then that person never wins. The match was just fine, but I felt bad for Dre Briscoe. I thought that guy, he, he looked really cool. In the final match, we have Swerve Strickland versus John Moxley. And uh, this match was pretty pretty good, actually. Uh, there was a few spots I didn't like. At one point, John sits down in a chair, and I was like, hey, yeah, they're outside the ring, and John Moxley sits in the chair. And I'm like, why the fuck would you sit in a chair in the middle of a wrestling match? And sure as shit, two seconds later, Swerve Strickland ran up and beat the shit out of him while he was sitting in the chair. I was like, see, that's what you get for being a dumbass. Uh, this match was definitely the best match on the card. Um, <clears throat> John Moxley win with the tights hold, and he got the victory. And the next, and the and after that. The devil and his crew jump Adam Page in the back. And a lot of chaos. And uh, they're hyping up a Ring of Honor pay-per-view at some point. And I looked up, like, how do I watch Ring of Honor? And I found out they have a paid subscription thing. It's pay, uh, You can pay $10 a month to watch Ring of Honor. And uh, I was like, why the fuck would I do that? Now, he, I think that's, that's such a bad deal. Because, like, I mean, I could get Peacock. I could get Peacock for $5. You get all of WWE and plus, like, The Office and everything else. Or you could pay $10 a month to get Ring of Honor. 
I, I don't know. To me, I was like, why don't they just have all three AEW shows, Ring of Honor, plus their pay-per-views on here for $10 a month? That would be a fucking great deal. I would get it in a heartbeat. But just Ring of Honor, you can eat my ass. Uh, so, yeah. So no, no thank you. Next up, we have SmackDown. Uh, the Bloodline come out. Roman says Solo is his new number two. They kind of faked it out where it looks like it's going to be Jimmy for a second, but he switched it to Solo. Uh, then Randy Orton comes out challenging Roman to a match at the Royal Rumble. And then we start the U.S. Championship Tournament. Uh, Grayson Waller versus Carmelo Hayes. Holy shit, this match was fucking fire. I loved it. I love this match. Uh... Carmelo Hayes won this match. Carmelo Hayes won, and he will advance to the second round in the U.S. Championship Tournament. And I'm really excited to see that. Kevin Owens versus Austin Theory. Another U.S. Championship Tournament uh, first round match. And my boy Kevin Owens beat up Austin Theory. And then after the match, later on, you see Kevin and Carmelo meet up for the first time backstage to hype up next week's uh, match. Charlotte and Oscar get have a match where unfortunately Charlotte got injured and she'll be out for eight to ten months. Then the damage control have a promo. Holy shit, this is like the best damage control promo I've ever seen. Uh, I was like, hell yeah, but this one's more of like a pre recorded one and you know, it was just fucking lit. I was actually for the first time uh, probably ever. I've been really hyped for damage c- control. And that's kind of funny because I was there at the first night of damage control uh, when they debuted at SummerSlam in Nashville, Tennessee. I was there that night. And even then, I wasn't that hyped for them. So, but it was really cool. It was the first time I've seen, uh, I've been hyped for these girls. And then um, they hinted that Bailey is going to try to win the Royal Rumble. And become a champion. And uh, Asuka and Kairi Sane are reforming Kabuki Warriors. And they're going to go for the tag gold. And I was like, oh shit, yeah. I don't know. I I, I like my girls Chelsea Chelsea Green and Piper and Evan. But Kabuki Warriors are pretty cool too. And speaking of the Kabuki Warriors. It's the Kabuki Warriors versus Mishin and Selena Vega. And the Kabuki Warriors win. And uh, kind of cool seeing Mishin. You don't see her a lot. Um, unfortunately, she lost here. So Randy's getting ready for his match with Jay. U- uh, Randy's getting ready for his match with Jimmy Uso. And L.A. Knight comes up and says, Hey, man, if you need backup, I'll give you some backup. And Randy's like, Man, I don't need your fucking backup. And L.A.'s like, Well, <clears throat> you'll probably get it anyway. So now we get our main event, and it's Randy Orton versus Jimmy Uso. Uh, match was fun. And of course, Solo comes out, and L.A. Knight comes out to save the day. He beats up Solo, and Randy was able to get the victory over Jimmy Uso. But after uh, that happens, Roman Reigns attacks L.A. Knight. And then they're ganging up on L.A. and Randy. But A.J. comes out to save the day. He runs off the bloodline. It's A.J. Styles, Randy Orton, and L.A. Knight in the ring. And oh my god. L.A. Knight looks fucking jacked as shit. I don't know what him and Randy been fucking doing. But they've been plotting somehow. Because those boys are fucking huge. And huge A.J. Styles jumped. L.A. Knight knocked his ass out. So I was like, God damn. Next up, we have AEW Rampage. Hell yeah, that's two AEW shows in one episode? Fuck yeah. So first up, it's Orange Cassidy and the Von Erics with Dan Housen versus Matt Menard, Angelo Parker, and Jack Hagar. I only know, I know everybody on the good guy side. The only person on the bad guy side I know is Jack Hagar. And, uh... <sighs> I kind of wish they ditched the goofy hat. I know he had a, like a hat thing for a while, and now Dan Housen has his hat. I just kind of wish they just dropped that shit. I mean, it was funny for a minute, but you can only get so far with the fucking hat. I just dropped that thing. 
have or, or have it bur- uh, be burned alive or something. Right, just write it off TV. Uh, it, this match is pretty good. Uh, definitely best match of the night here. Orange Cassidy and the Von Erics end up getting the win with their father, with their father Kevin joining them by ringside and help, and he even got to put the claw on somebody. This allowed to help to promote the movie, The Claw. Next up, Don Callis' family versus Hunter Gray and Paul Titan. Uh, this is a super quick match. Don Callis and his family win. Uh, yeah, this, this, I mean, there's this really jacked fucker on that team. He looked cool as shit, so I'm really excited to see more of that. Next up, we have Anna J versus Red Velvet. I, I've never seen or heard any of these girls before. Uh, Anna Jade went over. Uh, they weren't bad. Uh, maybe I, I, I can get to know these girls more. If yeah, hopefully I get to watch more at AW and learn more about these girls. In our main event, we have Top Flight Action Andrade versus El Hijo Vikingo. El Hijo Vikingo, Commander and Penta L Zero. Medio. Okay, just a bunch of fucking luchadors, goddammit. Fuck. Fuck your goopy ass names. That's why you lost, too. Top flight in action. Andrade won. Uh, they beat the hardest fucking names in the world in a six man tag match. Uh, you know, it, it match was just okay. And that was AEW Rampage. <clears throat> and that, that concludes that week's uh, shows. Let's jump to the next week of shows. We start with NWA 138. <clears throat> Next up, uh, in our first match, we have Dak Draper versus Mims. Apparently, these guys were like best buds, uh, and now they're having a match. There's a lot of best buddies fighting on NWA. I don't know why. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, this one's for the NWA World Television Championship. There's a lot of damn titles running around in NWA. I have yet, I've watched goddamn NWA for like five or six weeks in a row. Have yet to see the goddamn main champion fight. But this is the second time on this show I've actually got to see uh, Mims defend his title. And uh, it looked like he was going to lose this one too. But the match ended in a time limit draw. Um, yeah, kind of, also kind of hinted at a Mims heel turn. Because at one point he knew the match was almost up. And he just hid outside the ring until that was over. Next up we have another uh, intergender tag match. With Thom Latmir and Camille versus Brian Idol and Natalia Marco- Markova. And Brian Idol and uh, Natalie Natalia Markova won that match. That Not a whole lot there. Uh, after that match, we had a promo with EC3, and apparently Matt Cardona challenged him for the NWA Championship at Paranoia. And I've watched this show for four or five, maybe even six weeks in a row. I have yet once to see Matt Cardona on this fucking program, once. So when the fuck did he challenge him for the damn title? It hadn't been on social media, and they didn't even show the fucking clip, or like a rewind clip, if it happened... Ten episodes ago, it had to been a fucking while ago, or he did it on social media because I did not see it. Uh, that was kind of dumb. They really should have uh, fucking. They should have either shown a clip from the episode where he called him out on, or the social media clip. Because I was like, I guess he did. I didn't hear Matt Cardona call out shit. After that, the Southern Six have a promo, uh, and they even hint at doing fucking cocaine. I guess. I guess uh, Billy Corgan doesn't learn his fucking lessons. Uh, then there's a six-man tag. The Southern Six take on the Miserably Faithful. And the Southern Six win this match. Uh, they're, they're so-so on the promos. The Southern Six are. They're so-so as wrestlers. It just It's just all right. Um, yeah. I, I can't believe they fucking hinted at cocaine after all that hot water they got in for having cocaine at the fucking pay-per-view. Next up, we have our Christmas edition of Monday Night Raw. 
the show opened up with Judgment Day and our truth coming out saying, hey guys, hey, I appreciate the gang uh, initiation last week, but now we good, right? And uh, I feel like they're really considering letting our truth in. And and J.D. McDonough ran his mouth. So our truth challenged J.D. McDonough with, to a miracle on 34th Street fight uh, and loser leaves Judgment Day. And this was awesome. It was J.D. McDonough versus R-Truth with Dirty Dominic Mysterio. And uh, oh my god, this match was fucking awesome. I lo- my favorite part was when the Truth kicked a f- uh, fucking present. Like uh, J.D. McDonough had a present up. Fucking Truth kicked it right through his foot through the present to his face. Holy shit, this match was just so much fucking fun. Truth is 50 and he is whooping ass. Oh my gosh, and our truth won. I was so fucking happy. It was a miracle on 34th Street Fight. They've been doing these for years and years and years. And I love it every year. I love Christmas editions of wrestling. Uh, they're just so much fun. And I, this match made me happy. Next up, Nia Jax addresses the man, Becky Lynch. And boy, these girls are just fucking doing some killer promos. Uh, against each other, and I'm actually looking forward to the match. Uh, so I'm really excited to see how that goes. Uh, I could, I think Becky Lynch will probably win. I feel like Nia is her last obstacle before she gets to Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania. Next up was an amazing Intercontinental Championship match. It is the Miz versus the Ring General Gunther? And if the Miz loses. He cannot challenge Gunther again, but if The Miz wins, he ties Chris Jericho for the most Intercontinental Championship title reigns. But The Miz lost. Uh, uh, but, oh man, it was such a good match. Proves that Miz definitely belongs in WWE. He is great, uh, but he is not to Gunther's level. Uh, next up, we have the goddamn American Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura sings a little poem, and I, I, I can see I can see the writers' room them having fun writing this. But Shinsuke's delivery was god awful. Uh, somehow it was supposed to piss Cody Rhodes off, and it did. Cody and Shinsuke beat the shit out of each other all over the arena, and they will be having a match at Raw One. The next up, we have the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship uh, are on the line. It's Kane Carter and Katana Chance versus Chelsea Green and Piper Nevin. And my girls, my girls lost. I was so sad. I thought Chelsea Green and Piper Nevin were great champions. And they lost to these two little girls. And to be honest... The only reason I think those girls won is because they're going to turn around and immediately lose it to the Kabuki Warriors. I mean, I hate to be mean, but I think it's the only reason because Chelsea Green and Piper Nevin are heels, and so are the Kabuki Warriors. They're just they're handing it to a face so a uh, team so the heel team could take it back. And uh, I would have rather just seen the Kabuki Warriors beat Chelsea Green and Piper Nevin, to be honest. Uh, that, I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I really like Chelsea Green and Piper Nevin. I thought they were great. But, shit happens. Uh, and the winner is Carter and Chance here. Uh, next up, we had Ivar and with Valhalla versus Akira Dozawa and Maxine Dupree. Dupree. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to watch this match because of goofy ass Hulu. Ivar won. I really wish I got to see that. Uh, next up, Imperia, Imperium attacks Santa Claus Kofi. Oh, those dicks. Hulu cut that off too. I did. They did show who, uh, Kofi twerking, but I didn't get to see the Imperium attack. Uh, next up, World Heavyweight Champion Seth freaking Rollins. Uh, he does a promo and says, you know, he got me really pumped for Drew, him and Drew's match. Uh, oh, man. Like, like Drew, Drew's promos, Drew came out and did a promo, too. His fucking promos, since he lost, or since it's been going after the uh, Seth title, his promos have been 
the best he's ever, you know, he, he has been bringing it with fucking promos. I kind of want Drew to win, but I don't think he will. But damn, Drew has been stepping up on his promos. He's been fucking killing it. Ludwig Kaiser with Giovanni Vinci versus main event Jey Uso. Jey Uso got the win. Hulu also cut that out. God damn it. And uh, that's pretty cool. I'm glad Jey Uso won that one. Uh, this one Hulu didn't cut out. The main event is the undisputed W Tag Team Champions, the Creed Brothers. Versus Judgment Day, Finn Balor and Damian Priest. Uh, yeah, uh, it's pretty good here. Uh, I'm I'm glad Judgment Day retained. Creed Brothers are cool, but they need to head back to NXT and win those titles. Uh, get them because they definitely deserve it more than the fucking Mafia guys. I, I I'm not a big fan of the Italian mob, so let the Creed Brothers win that one. But Judgment Day is just a little too cool for them, and they got the win here. Okay, time for NXT. It's Tiffany Stratton versus Phelan Henley. Uh, I was actually really surprised Phelan Henley won this match. Tiffany Stratton's, you know, like one of the top heels there. I'm surprised she. Uh, I'm surprised she uh, she lost. Next up, Isla Dragunov comes out, and this shocked the hell out of me. That uh, Rich Holland came out. I was like, what the fuck is he doing here? He is saying he needs to prove himself. So, alright. I guess he's on NXT now. He needs it because he's hurting motherfuckers like crazy. Next up we have JC, JC Jane and Thea Hale versus Kiana James and Izzy Dame. Uh, Kiana and Izzy won. I'm glad. I mean, I hate to pick on Thea Hale. But she's just, she, I just don't like her. I don't know. I apologize. It's nothing personal against the girl. She just, she just irks the shit out of me. Uh, next up, we have Char, uh, Dragon Lee. Next up, we have Dragon Lee versus Charlie Dempsey, uh, which is pretty cool. I love both these guys. Um, Dragon Lee won. I, I, I hope to see more of Charlie Dempsey. Big William Regal fan, so I hope... He becomes something soon. Next up, we have Tavian Heights versus Luca Crucifino. This is another one of the men's breakout tournament matches with uh, Tavian Heights winning. Next up, Nikita Loins versus Tavian Paxley. N uh, Nikita Loins won that one. And uh, next up, we have Gallius versus Hank Walker and Tank Ledger. I, I just didn't care about this match. Uh, I mean, it's nothing... Against the guys, I I just they haven't been on TV a whole lot, so I don't know enough about them. I've been watching NXT for like two months straight, and I I see these guys occasionally. The match was great though. Uh, Gallius won, and our main event is Ilya Dragunov versus Rich Holland. Uh, Rich, it looked like Rich fucking hurt Ilya Dragunov, and I was like, God damn, dude! But I know I know this is not real because they wouldn't have done all that if he got really hurt. So, uh, I guess they're going with the weird storyline where he's hurting everybody. I don't know if that's really appropriate uh, with Big E. I don't know. And I kind of felt a little sour, a little sour taste on that. Uh, maybe when Big E comes that back, he can do that shit. But I don't know. To me, it was just it was like that's, that kind of lets a sour taste in my mouth. Uh, just a heads up, I did not watch AEW the week of this week here. Um... I just, honestly, I just didn't have time with, uh, i just been busy. I just didn't have time to watch it this week. But, uh, but I did watch SmackDown in the beginning. Randy Orton, LA Knight, and AJ Styles are all having a promo. All, they're all arguing on who should face Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble. And uh, Nick Aldis comes out and says, Hey, next, at the first SmackDown of the year, you guys will have a triple threat. And winner... Will face Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble. Now wait a goddamn minute. The whole reason Randy Orton signed to SmackDown was he was supposed to have a guaranteed match at the Royal Rumble against Roman Reigns. Where the fuck did that go? Where did that go? I, I, I get, I, everybody forgot. I guess like, the whole reason he signed. Nick Aldis was on Randy's dick trying to get him to SmackDown. 
and then they pull this shit. This was fucking stupid. Damn, like, I'm not trying to be mean or try to be a dick, but y'all fucking said that he gets the bloodline if he signs SmackDown, and now, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I, 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 I could have, maybe they're trying to do a fatal four way at Royal Rumble. That'd be cool, but fuck, like, don't. Just, it kind of makes me feel stupid if y'all try to do this shit. So then, we have our first match. It's Bianca Belair, Shotzi, Zelina Vega, Mia Yim versus Damage Control. Uh, this was a Christmas episode as well. And this was like a Christmas kind of like street fight. And I know Damage Control just had that really great promo last week. So... Uh, I was really hoping Damage Control would keep it up, but it is the Christmas episode, and they're kind of sending everybody happy. You know, you don't, you know, same with Tribute to the Troops and Christmas specials, you kind of expect the faces to go over. They're wanting this these shows to be feel-good, happy, leave everybody on a happy note kind of shows. So the good girls won, and the greatest part for me is Mia, Mia Yim got the win. That girl never gets the win. It was great to see her get the victory on this Good for her. I'm glad she got the pin. Uh, but I think starting uh, in two weeks when SmackDown comes back, Damage Control needs to be whooping everybody's ass. Next up, the hardest worker in WWE, it seems like, Dragon Lee, took on uh, Butch for the NXT North American Championship with Dragon Lee getting a victory on Butch. Uh, fun match. Uh, ah. It's hard to to root for Butch when I want to call him Pete Dunn. Pete Dunn was so badass. Butch is just Butch. And later on, we see Butch kind of sad about where it happened. And uh, Pretty Daily came out and mocked the shit out of him. Oh, poor Butch, my boy. Go back to Pete Dunn, please. Please, Triple H. Uh, next up, Roman and Nick Aldis finally meet. And Roman kind of tries to intimidate Nick Aldis. And Nick Aldis ain't scared of Roman's little punk ass. Uh, so he's, he, he is kind of cool. Even though Nick Aldis kind of forgot um, forgot he signed a contract with Randy. But Randy did RKO him. So I mean, fuck him too. I'll be pissed at him too. We're going back to our U.S. qualifier uh, tournament matches. We have Kevin Owens versus Carmelo Hayes. Great fun match. Uh, I feel like this one could have gone another 10 minutes, but still great. Uh, Kevin Owens beat Carmelo Hayes clean in the ring. Uh, it was nice to see, you know, Kevin Owens getting a victory. I, I really enjoyed this match. I feel like these boys could have done another great 10 minutes to really hype up this match here. Uh, next up, we had Bobby Lashley versus Santos Escobar. Uh, Bobby Lashley still a face here. And Santos Escobar is the heel. Um, I guess Bobby and the Straight Profits are going to stay face for a little bit. And uh, they they did lose, though. Santos Escobar had, uh, they had two masked guys jump out and attack Bobby. And it turns out it's his buddies from LWO. They're joining him. I don't know what the fuck's going on with the first... <laughs> what on SmackDown with... With everything, there's got the Street Profits, they got Santos Escobar new crew and LWO and the Bloodline. So you got fucking nonstop factions everywhere on SmackDown. I don't know. Oh, we, oh, we saw a, pro, uh, a promo on SmackDown for um, Karrion Cross. I was like, how are you gonna pump him up as a badass after he just lost last week? I don't know. I, I fuck me. They gotta do something with my poor boy Karrion Cross. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll just pretend we didn't see the last week and uh, he can do something. Uh, have him in a fucking rivalry. He can win, please. Like, like in the promo, he's like, "I did this, I did that. I uh, this this happened because of me." I was like, "Not really, not really, buddy. You stretching that shit." Uh, I don't know. He lost to Ray. He lost to AJ. He lost to Drew McIntyre. Put this boy in the rivalry. He can win. That's what he needs. 
So, I don't, I'm trying to think what baby face the guy can beat. I mean, fuck Cameron Grimes, maybe, even though I love Cameron Grimes. I don't know. And in our main event, it's Solo Sokoa versus AJ Styles. And ripped ass AJ Styles. He won, but only by DQ. I would have, I don't know. I just really rather seen AJ win this match cleanly. I know Solo is so is still so new. He can he can handle a loss. Uh, I know everybody's saying, well, he beat John Cena cleanly in the ring. He's kind of like hyped up now, but fuck everybody beats John Cena. Even Austin Theory beat fucking Cena, so it's not to me that big of a deal anymore. All right, and. One last show. I told you this was a big fucking episode. One last show. We're going to do NWA Wrestling. This is the Christmas Hangover, episode 139. Uh, first up, we had a Christmas uh, Christmas Wish Battle Royal. It's a tag team battle royal. And the winners get to uh, challenge the tag team champions. Um, and the best part is the Slime Brothers won this match. Oh my gosh, I'm so pumped. I love the Slime Bros. Uh, I, they're, the, they're the only ones I was really rooting for. And they won. I was like, fucking A. It's a oh, oh, I was so happy they won. Uh, next up, Aaron Stevens does a promo. And oh my gosh, this was so good to hear. A good promo in the NWA. Boy, God, why is he Aaron Stevens your champion? He, oh my gosh, he's done such a great promo. And... They really needed it. They they needed this promo because he 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 uh he proved he, he's the shit. Like he 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 he's uh, he's he's a manager though, unfortunately. But boy, he, he, he it's nice to see a good talker on NWA for once. Uh, next up, we have a mixed uh, intergender match. It's Miss Kate versus Sal the Pal. I don't know any of these motherfuckers. Uh, Sal the Pal apparently had like split personality. And every time you hit him in the head, he'd either be a good wrestler or a bad wrestler. Uh, Miss Kate got the win. You know, it was a fun match. Uh, next up, we had Daisy Kill and Talos. They're back. They're fighting Carson, Drake, and Lord Crew. These guys are apparently from EC3's uh, wrestling organization. Uh, so they were kind of getting some little YouTube time with Days to Kill and Talos getting a win. Uh, and then in the main event, they had a uh, NWA 75 pay-per-view, like, rewind match. They kind of just showed footage from that, uh, a match from that pay-per-view. It was Camille versus Kenzie Page. Uh, I, I didn't know either one of them, but, you know, it was a fucking fine match. It was great. Uh, Kenzie Page won. And uh, apparently it was a big deal. I did. I, I wasn't watching N. I just. I didn't jump into NWA until right after NWA seventy five pay per view. All right, and that's all the wrestling I'm going to review this uh, week. All right, real quick. Uh, go. Let's go over MVP of the week and best match of the week. You know, obviously this is over like a two week period this time. Uh, but so for me, MVP of the week goes to the most entertaining guy. Uh, on Raw on for multiple weeks now, our truth. He has been entertaining. It's awesome, and this is going to lead right into match of the week. Uh, my favorite match between all these shows I just reviewed. My favorite match was the Our Truth versus J D McDonough Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street fight. Uh, yeah, this match was just so much damn fun. I had a blast. Our Truth is killing it. I wouldn't be surprised if he won the next MVP of the week. It is now time for the first ever Shawnee Awards. All right. This is the first ever Shawnee Awards. Let me go over every category. We have Wrestler of the Year, Match of the Year, Feud of the Year, Most Improved Wrestler of the Year, Tag Team of the Year, Best Talker of the Year. Oh, boy, that's... 
Oh, yes, I'm so excited. Let's jump into our first category. Let's do Most Improved Wrestler of the Year. And the nominees are Dominic Mysterio, Akira Tozawa, Baron Corbin, Sami Zayn, and Io Sky. I'm going to give the win to Dominic Mysterio with a close second being Baron Corbin who's dropped all the gimmicks and has come a badass again. Oh man, he's come a long way. And uh, But Dominic Mysterio, he's just had such a good year. Uh, come from one of the best heels in WWE right now. And uh, he definitely deserves most improved wrestler of the year. Next up, let's go to Tag Team of the Year. And your nominees are The Usos, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, Judgment Day with Finn Balor and Damian Priest, kind of specifically, Chelsea Green and Piper Niven, Alpha Academy, A-Town, Down Under, and Pretty Deadly. I'm going to give the win to... Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn with a close second going to Chelsea Green and Piper Nevin. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, they win, the, they win at the main event uh, at WrestleMania Night 1. They had a bunch of great matches in between. They had like a killer Falls County where hardcore match against Judgment Day, which is fucking awesome. I love that match. They just had a bunch of good matches with it. And main evented um, WrestleMania and defeated the Usos to win the titles. I had to give it to Kevin Owens, Owens and Sami Zayn. But I also really want to get to Chelsea Green and uh, Piper Niven. But I went with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn instead. Next up we have Best Talker of the Year. And your nominees are L.A. Knight. Cody Rhodes. Paul Heyman. Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, and The Miz. All are great on the mic. All of them have had great promos this year. Uh, the Miz had a couple great promos, uh, especially against L.A. and uh, a couple against Guther as well. Uh, Kevin Owens, I mean, he's always doing great. He's also, especially the day he was a uh, special guest commentator on SmackDown, uh, that was hilarious. Seth Rollins done some great promos. Uh, he's done a, a couple good ones against uh, CM Punk, and uh, he's had. I mean, he's just had some great killer promos this year. Paul Heyman, every time he touches the mic, killer promos. Cody Rhodes, oh my gosh, she's had some good ones too. And L.A. Knight, and I'm gonna give the winner of Best Talker of the Year goes to. L.A. Knight. And the reason I chose L.A. Knight is because he was almost fired, became a manager, then became a wrestler again. He was losing all the time. And he used the mic to get over. And now he's one of the top faces in the business. Probably, may, maybe like the top face of SmackDown. L.A. Knight has gotten over just from talking, so there's no way he can lose Talker of the Year. Next up, we have Feud of the Year. All right, and the Feud nominees are Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso, Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar, The Miz versus L.A. Knight, Rey Mysterio versus Dominic Mysterio, Gunther versus Chad Gable and Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre. Every one of these uh, rivalries were fucking fantastic. Uh, this is this is where it starts to get hard, folks. This one was uh, th these guys had some great rivalries. I'm going to give the best feud of the year goes to Roman Reigns versus Jay Uso. Who it squeaked by, but that one just had, had a lot of impact. Um, I, I 
I wasn't a fan of how the their match ended at SummerSlam, but I, I, I don't know. I think that one did it for me. Uh, it could have been longer, but when Jey Uso got the victory uh, on Roman Reigns, or he got the pinfall victory over Roman Reigns uh, at Money in the Bank was huge, and then you know going into SummerSlam, I think to me that got viewed of the year. Wrestler of the year. Here are your nominees: Gunther, Seth Rollins, Cody Rhodes. Rhea Ripley, Damian Priest, and Roman Reigns. Who had the best year? There's only one person I feel like deserves this. Uh, there, there's two, but the first, the winner is, and I think this person deserves the, the award the most, because I think this person had the best year overall. And to me, Wrestler of the Year, Shawnee Award 2023, goes to Rhea Ripley. Now hear me out. Rhea Ripley won the World Rumble. Then she won the title at WrestleMania from Charlotte Flair. And has won every match since then. Or, I mean, has, yeah, has won every match since then. She's still champion, still whooping ass, still standing strong. Uh, the close second runner-up, Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins has had a great year. Uh, he won the title at Crown Jewel. Uh, but, however, that wasn't until, like, May. Uh, Rhea won in April. Only one month or so ahead. Uh, but... Rhea also won the Royal Rumble on top of that. So I had to get the win to Rhea Ripley. She was so dominant this year. So let's go over the Shawnee Awards winners. Wrestler of the Year went to Rhea Ripley. Most Improved Wrestler of the Year goes to Dominic Mysterio. Tag Team of the Year was won by Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Best Talker of the Year went to LA Knight. Feud of the Year went to Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. But we have one more hidden category. Bonus block time. Match of the year. Let's. Here are your nominees for match of the year. Edge versus Finn Balor in a Hell in a Cell match at WrestleMania 39. Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre at Crown Jewel. Finn Balor and Damian Priest versus Sammy and Kevin Owens. For the uh, tag team championships, Gunther versus Chad Gable on Raw. That was not the one where Chad got the count out, but the one where Gunther beat him. Uh, Becky Lynch versus Trish Stratus in a steel cage match at Payback, and Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania 39. And the winner is Match of the Year 2023. I'm giving it to Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania 39. That match was fucking amazing. It was great. I was on the edge of my seat. Such a great match. Uh, all these matches were, in my opinion, great. Uh, hard. I could. I can't even pick a runner up. But for me. Rhea and Charlotte, they got match of the year. And guys, that's it for the Shawnee Awards. Guys, that's it for Fantasy Universe Wrestling Podcast. And on the very next episode, we're doing week one and two of the Fantasy Wrestling Universe bookings. I promise you that will be in the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.